16th, uh, 2018 meeting of the uh, Safeco board uh, to order. M Madam Ch uh, Clerk, please take the roll. Thank you. Matt Conant. Here. Nick Avdis. Here. Tom Barandis. Here. Brian Holloway. Cyril Shaw. Here. Ansley Ashby. Jeff Harris. Rick Jennings. Sue Frost. Here. Don Natoli. Susan Peters. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Phil Cerna. Here. We do have a quorum. Great. You want to go ahead and make Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting of SAFCA is being broadcast live and will be cablecast without an eruption on Metro Cable 14 and will be re-aired on Saturday, August 18th at 9 a.m. and again on Sunday, August 19th at 9 a.m. This meeting is also webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv and streaming video of the board meeting is available on SAFCA's website within 48 hours after the meeting. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should fill out a speaker form located here on the lectern and bring it to me. When addressing the board, please identify yourself for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'll join me for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> At this point, I'd like to um, see if we have any comments on items not on the agenda. Opening up, I don't have any slips. Nope, moving on. Please call the first item. Our first item would be closed session, and the directors will recess to hearing room two. All right, recess for closed session. Hmm. Why? It's not on the agenda. Yeah. No. I'd like to call this meeting back into session. Madam Chair, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, reestablish a quorum? Thank you. Matt Conant. Matt Conant. Here. Nick Avdis. Here. Tom Brandis. Here. Brian Holloway. Here. Cyril Shaw. Here. Ansley Gashby. Jeff Harris. Rick Jennings. Here. Sue Frost. Here. Don Natoli. Here. Susan Peters. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Phil Cerna. Here. We do have a quorum. Great. Uh, Ms. Gilchrist, a report out from closed session. A report out on Government Code Section 54956.8, Conference with Real Property Negotiators regarding property at 5704 Surfway, APN number 029-021-055, under negotiation are price and terms of payment. I can't turn my thing on. Can't you turn it on with that? Um, no, nope. you're right. It's on. Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the board authorized staff to continue negotiations. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Our next item is the executive director's report for August 16th. Good afternoon, Chair Abdis, members of the board. I just wanted to um, talk a little bit more about, you know, last month we we're able to announce that we received about $1.8 billion under this um, Supplemental Appropriations Disaster Relief. So as we're moving forward with the core on it, uh, it you know, the, the main thing about it is that it, it has to be an expedited process. So Congress actually funded this under uh, some emergency powers they have for funding additional funding. and. Uh, and so our projects were actually um, funded under that first yellow item where there's additional amount necessary um, for expenses to address emergency situations at core projects. So they, they feel because we're so at risk that, that we fit that category. So because of that, um, that we need to move it through in an expedited process. So uh, Assistant Secretary of the Army James put out a video to all core employees and um, basically it's it's telling them that their normal process they've got to get away from and get moving dirt but I the part in yellow really is what is uh, getting us moving fast is plain and simple divisions and districts that won't move dirt or can't move dirt are, are going to run the risk of losing their funding so what that does is that uh, SAFCA is still responsible for clearing out the path for the, the core, and that puts us on the critical path. 
uh, for the levy work, especially down in the pocket area there where we know there are encroachments and some real estate easements and relocations there. So we're going to have to accomplish it in an expedited manner. Um, and that that so we're going to start bringing on some additional resources and actually later on in the uh, item eight today uh, Jason will introduce as an information item a program we're going to be bringing to the board next month uh, to start uh, looking at uh, trying to voluntarily um, remove a lot of the encroachments that are in the way of construction down there the other thing is as we were um, back there working to try to get this funding. We committed to everyone at all the levels that we could that we, SAFCO is committed to helping the Corps uh, accomplish its mission on this. And so um, we've offered to help them with resources. We do know that resources at the Corps are gonna be a, a bit of a problem moving forward to get that much money um, and, and their contracting process is slow sometimes so uh, later on you'll see an item I believe it's item 9 that Gary will be bringing to you uh, where we are going to stand up 14 contracts to be used as needed um, for a, a number of different services so as, as things come up where we can help the Corps we'll be able to get to them quickly specifically on the American River Common Features Ward of 2016 the core is standing up three teams. They're, they're kind of looking at it as three different projects. One is uh, looking at the seepage and stability of the levees along the Sacramento River south of the American River and in the north area. Um, second is erosion on both the Sacramento and American River. And then the third is the Sacramento Weir and Bypass. So just from a map standpoint, basically the three teams are, are the first team will take care of the seepage and stability that's in the blue areas and and a little they'll, they'll look at the height of the levee we, we don't believe there'll be any that need to be raised but one team will look at the blue and the pink areas a separate team will look at the green areas and then the a third team will look at widening the sack and bypass over at the core so we've been uh trying to do a lot to advance this as as you know a lot of this work we initiated under the levy accreditation program and um, Pete is actually out constructing part of the north area right now for the Corps. We've accomplished a lot of the designs. The Corps is going to look to see if there's additional areas of levies that they want to do in addition to what we were feeling we needed to do for the 100 and 200 year uh, requirements at the federal and state level. Um, and so they'll be looking at that, but we've also been clearing the path for the Sacramento Weir and bypass widening. We purchased Bright Landfill, and, and Dan has been working on everything to get that ready to go for cleanup next year. So we'll have that out of the way of the bypass widening. We've been, the state has been moving forward on its lower Elkhorn program, which is a widening this, the Yolo Bypass in the lower end of the Elkhorn Basin and the north air end of the Sacramento Bypass. Um, we've assisted them in a number of items with real estate and also part of the deal for doing that was that the reclamation districts would consolidate there. So mm -hmm. SAFCA has assisted in working that through. The other one that uh, Gary and Tim have been working with Sierra Northern Railroad, the railroad goes across existing weir and is in the way of where we're going to widen it. So we need to, to do something to get them out of the way. Um, last month, we sponsored a design charrette with the state so that we could, the non-federal sponsors could reach agreement as to what we wanted the Sacramento, the widened Sacramento weir to look like as we work with the core. And then just earlier this week, Pete had a three-day charrette with the core, kind of walking them through all the design work and all the work we've done uh, as a, a step in turning it over to them to, to go ahead and start finishing it. Jason has, uh, we've agreed to work with the, the state and the core on partnering sessions. So Jason been set, has set up one with the upper management of the core in the state and then another one with key um, key folks at both the core and the state down a little further down in the trenches there so that we can help 
uh, get everybody on the same same page moving forward. Um, we offered, and the court took us up on hiring a scheduler that would pull all this information together and help us track so we don't miss things, but more important, so that we can start identifying where we're short on resources there. And then uh, we're working on, Jason's working on, we've got another concern that with all this work coming, can the construction industry handle it from, uh, do we have, have enough equipment to do all the slurry wall work at the same time? Are we going to have a shortage of any materials? And so we're trying to get some expertise from the industry to help us look at that to see if that's going to become a problem, anything we might be able to do to address that. And then on the erosion work, we've been sponsoring the Lower American River Task Force uh, Bank Protection Working Group that Gary and Dan have been working with and um, of course been participating along with the other stakeholders so that as we get projects in the American River ready to go that all the stakeholders have reached agreement on that. At Folsom Dam Rays, uh, because it's got both the Pure Reclamation and the Corps and the state, there's it, it, it's been a little bit uh, difficult sometimes in getting agreement on exactly what we should do on some of the designs. So we actually hired a facilitator that has been helping, and it's moving along much better now. Um, We've been, uh, we've actually provided them some consultants to do some of the design work and some risk analysis, dam safety risk analysis work out there. And then there is one LERD that we're going to have to do. Placer County has a sewer line that's in the way of construction on the federal property out there. So we'll have to be moving that. So, uh, Rick, excuse me one second. Um, uh -huh. Could you back that slide up? Sure. So, Placer County is several miles from the dam. So, could you explain yeah, so, their sewer line there? So the um, the dam is in in Sacramento County, but some of the dikes are up around. Some go in El Dorado County, and some go right. up in Placer County. So, is it Dike Four that the sewer line's at? Yeah, it's it's Dike Four. Um, when there's an outfall from a subdivision, their sewer outfall runs across Bureau property to tie into the rest of the sewer system. And by extending the berm, by raising three and a half feet, you have to extend the berm out. And it clips where that sewer line is. So we're going to have to move the sewer line out of the future alignment of the dike. So it's where the <coughs> corporation yard is there? Or is it, I mean, is that near Beals Point? Or what? It's, it's, I don't know. it's further north of Beals Point. By Beals Point is the, um, it's the left wing dam and dike uh, five, or six, I'm sorry. Then as you keep going f no further north is Dyke 5 or 4, Dyke 5 and 4. So there's actually um, 12 dams and dikes out there. We have to raise all, all of them, three and a half feet. And some of them are, are in Placer County. So Dyke 4 is actually, mm -hmm. as you go up Folsom Auburn Road, um, mm -hmm. And you get over kind of by, uh, is it Eureka Road that comes in there, that yeah, light? Yeah, Eureka does, off or Douglas the, Boulevard. Off to the um, right is a subdivision there, and Dyke 4 is right over, <coughs> over okay. in that area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Natomas actually is benefiting in two ways greatly from uh, the, the, having our other projects fully funded. We had the core, even though we've paid our, our met our cost share obligations, the core needs help in continuing to uh, acquire real estate and, and do relocations out there. And they've asked us to continue helping. But every time we do, then we create credits. And so we've got the, we're going through the process to get the excess credits approved to use at the raise and at war to 2016, but we've been worried about them getting funded. Now that those two projects are fully funded, then that concern goes away. So that will allow us to uh, be a little more um, able to move forward on helping with the LERDs. And the other is now uh, Natomas in the President's 19 budget was the highest funded flood project in the country. Now we won't have to compete with ourselves so we can continue to, to seek um, good funding every year for to finish this up. A couple of things, finally, we've got some good news on the contracts. Uh, Reach I, which is down along the Garden Highway, it was awarded. 
they're moving forward um, with it. They hope to build a seepage blanket under I-5 this year if they can get the pipe material that they need to in time. Uh, but the slurry wall construction will be in 2019, which is the one that will require the road closure. So um, we know that will be next summer now. Um, and then Reach D, they actually are um, mobilizing this week. And in the last week in August, they'll begin work on uh, the Vestal drain. And then that'll take, they'll, that'll spill over into 2019. And then the pumping plants will be worked on next year, too. So we're finally getting the federal um, projects going out in Natomas there. So with that, I'll take any, any questions. Any questions, Mr. Johnson? Thank you, Rick. Our next item is consent matters, and items two through seven are in order. A motion, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Separate matters, item number eight, encroachment removal program framework and coordination with the Central Valley Flood Protection Board. Good afternoon, members of the board. I'm Jason Campbell. I'm Deputy Executive Director. The item before you today is an informational item that is in response to the number of efforts that were taking place and have been going on for some time uh, to identify and get levy certification within Sacramento. The projects that Rick identified need a little bit of help in order for us to be able to clear the path, and some of, the, some of this will help us get there. So. As Mr. Campbell, can you speak in the mic? It's Certainly. Use your outdoor voice. Yeah, use your okay. loud, booming voice, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> Coaching voice. Here we go. Actually, uh, what we're talking about today is the voluntary encroachment program that SAFCA is uh, considering for future, for the next actually 30 years. As part of the CCAD assessment, we had identified that we were going to do levy modernization. So there, within levy modernization, it includes uh, a number of activities regarding removal of encroachments on the levy system and other things. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of background regarding what we're thinking and why we're thinking it. So back in the late 70s, we're going to do a little history here, the city and county entered into the NFIP program. The National Flood Insurance Program requires that the local communities, those cities and counties, uh, certify the 100-year flood system, including those levies. As part of those levies, we are seeking certification, and the certifying uh, process includes two certifying units, potentially. Some of those are federal, under the Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Geological Survey, as well as the Bureau of Reclamation. And here in Sacramento, that is the, U the Army Corps of Engineers is one of our certifying entities. And the other is through a private process where a licensed civil engineer will certify the levies to meet 100 year uh, protection. Also included in the NFIP is a requirement to remove unacceptable high risk encroachments. Following uh, a number of events, the state of California also invoked some uh, new requirements onto us under SB 5 and in Title 23. We now have an urban level of flood protection requirement where cities and counties have to achieve 200 year level of protection and they need to do that by 2025. Again, we still have another certifying component here where a licensed civil engineer has to certify those levies to meet those requirements. And again, we also have the requirement to remove unacceptably high risk encroachments. SAFCA has in, embarked on a pretty hefty process to identify the problems that we might have uh, getting certified. Obviously, our wonderful capital improvement program has uh, a considerable amount to do with the certification. But once again, we have to be able to eliminate those encroachments that will be in the way of building those projects and then ultimate certification. Currently, SAFCA has identified that we have approximately 2,900 different encroachments of differing levels and whatnot of uh, risk uh, assessment, but needless to say, some of them still need to go. Most of those encroachments are fences and landscaping and retaining walls and uh, stairs on the levee system. So, 
in order to remove those encroachments, there's quite a bit that takes place. Your entities that you represent are involved, obviously cities, counties, and local maintaining agencies uh, have to identify and remove those encroachments or deal with them over a period of time through state inspections or core inspections. But primarily, the Central Valley Flood Protection Board has a responsibility for inspecting and reporting and removing the encroachments that are high hazard. The Central Valley Flood, flood Control's uh, enforcement process is a robust process, which uh, you can see in this flow chart has quite a few steps. And where we want to really try and focus from a SAFCA perspective is on this voluntary component. Now, unfortunately, in this uh, traditional process, that voluntary component comes after a notice of violation to a property owner occurs. So a property owner has an encroachment in the levy, S Central Valley Flood Protection Board would notify them via letter and then start an encroachment removal process that is an, uh, actually a uh, due diligence uh, effort as well as an actual administrative process through judicial review and a few other components. So SAFCA, as we move forward with our projects, particularly in the um, Sacramento River area, uh, in the pocket and little pocket, we're identifying that we really need to take some early action to make this happen. If we go through a traditional process with the Central Valley Board, it's going to take too much time and it will take a lot of effort. Central Valley Board does have a voluntary process, and you can see it up here on the right. And in that voluntary process, they have a number of opportunities for a program to come in and seek uh, improved voluntary compliance. So this is the areas that SAFCA has identified for us to really focus in. So when we get done with a notice uh, or a, a, con a compliance notice being issued or after, even after the notice of violation is issued to a, uh, a property owner, we now have some opportunities where we may be able to come in and seek some additional compliance. So SAFCA is recommending that we in the future develop an incentive program to improve that voluntary compliance. So what we're looking to do is expedite the encroachment removal for our federal projects so we can certify the LERDs and the real estate. And we are looking to get rid of those non-conforming major detrimental impacts. We're identifying that we really need to make sure that we identify the areas where we're looking to do those encroachments. So there are some eligibility requirements, of course. Safeco flood improvement project areas would be our, one of our priorities, and we'll see that in a second. And then, of course, we want to make sure they're the levees that we're maintaining and the access areas that we need. So some of those voluntary encroachment uh, incentives that we're, we would like to consider and bring back to you in a policy is that we would have some standard incentives where things like stairs and walls and landscaping, we would provide a unit price or unit cost and, pro and offer that to the encroachee, and then ultimately create a program where those uh, things are really kind of not negotiable, but something that we can really uh, provide to that property owner to get voluntary compliance. Then we have the other things that exist in the uh, encroachment world, <coughs> where we do have swimming pools and buildings and some other types of things out there that we really want to kind of do on a case-by-case -case basis that don't necessarily fit into the fixed encroachment incentive process. Again, program priorities. We would envision that we would want to focus on the improvement projects that we have, so particularly the Word of 2016 and the Natomas Basin projects. And then, of course, we would want to make sure that we were meeting the needs and the desires to get levy certification before the dates that certification expires for an FIP or through Title 23 and ULOP. So our next steps, we would envision that next month, we would, in the, in the next month, we would coordinate with the Central Valley Flood Protection Board because we are going to need to do some significant uh, coordination regarding compliance logistics. If you can imagine getting out on the street, knocking on doors and, and creating diaries and documents that we can actually <coughs> utilize for our incentive program, would also require that we coordinate with the Central Valley Board. If our incentive program voluntarily uh, does not work, then we would want to be able to help support the Central Valley Board in their uh, code enforcement effort. 
So along with that, we would also want to have the safeguard incentive policy to your board next month and seek approval to proceed with the, the process. With that, are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Any questions? I look forward to the policy. Obviously, these are very sensitive and critical issues related to what we need to do. So look forward to seeing that next month. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, resolutions authorizing the executive director to enter into consulting services contracts. The 14 firms are listed there on your agenda for flood risk management planning services on an as needed basis to support execution of safe goods programs and projects. Welcome, Mr. Bardini. Great. Uh, well, good afternoon, uh, Travis and members of the board. Gary Bardini, director of planning. Um, I guess I have the privilege of, of actually having the most resolutions under one board item so, uh, for <laughs> SAFCA, so I apologize, but uh, there's a bit of competition now with the uh, SAFCA staff. But um, what we have before are 14 resolutions for uh, engineering and planning services under a master service agreement. Um, the basis of the agreement is, is, is really to stand up resources to the significant effort that we have right now that uh, that Rick has just outlined, those that are to progress the project delivery, be it the American River Common Features Project, the Natomas Base, and continued with the Folsom Rays, completing the JFP, and then we have a number of closeout projects that need to be finished, and long standing up the encroachment efforts that uh, Jason just outlined. Further, we have efforts in planning to look to improving the bypass itself, both the Sacramento and Yolo Bypass, efforts to continue to look at 500-year projects, upstream reservoirs, in the management of the Folsom uh, in the future, and then of course the long-term maintenance and management that's gonna be required after we stand all these facilities up and maintain them in the future. So a significant amount of planning and project delivery activities. Um, with that, our objective in here was to essentially increase the amount of resources uh, to further the work. The second one was to, to basically try to move with an expeditious delivery of the resources. And this would be similar to in this MSA agreement, master service agreement that we have currently with the environmental services, which we've done over the last three years, and with the right-of-way services. So this is following a management practice that we're starting to use. Um, with that, for the services, the services we see that we need are general planning support, continuing feasibility assessments, economic analysis, hydraulic and hydraulic modeling, continuing water resource assessments and modeling, grant financial documents, aspects of O&M management and planning, and then lastly, just standard project management efforts. So we're looking at these resources to support. As far as the process of selecting the 14, um, back in July, recognizing the buildup needed, we put out an RFQ to, and we sent out to 75 uh, uh, prospective firms. Um, the, the solicitation was also on the internet or our website for four weeks. Of that, 23 applicants applied. Um, the, the applicant or the RFQs of the 23, we had three independent reviewers. Um, we looked at essentially the history, the aspects of the project which that they've done to relative to the work that we've outlined, and we looked at the credentials and experience of the team and the aspects of the appropriateness of their fees were evaluated. And that 14 firms were selected out of that. The contracts ranged from 300,000 to 1.7 million over a three-year period. Uh, with that, seven of the firms have what we call a, a minimal level at 300,000. We have three firms between 350,000 and 750,000. We have three firms at 1.2 million. And then we have one firm that's at 1.7. I just want to highlight the reason why that one's a little higher than the other is that one of the firms that was in the original RFQ process was acquired by another firm, and so we wanted to maintain that resource, and so that was elevated. Um, with that, the uh, where we stand now is that the ceiling uh, costs were essentially based on the amount of services. And then, of course, um, I want to acknowledge that four of the eight firms that were not selected are available on other contracts that we currently have, either through the MSA contracts or through our other. Um, moving forward, uh, as, as Rick outlined, we have a number of partnering meetings to stand with the management and further discuss how these resources could be applied and used to further the work. And, of course, one of the more important things is as we progress, we plan to provide a three-month kind of update on how we're using this master service contracts and task orders to keep the board informed moving forward. So with that, I'd be happy to take on any other questions. Yeah, Mr. Shaw. 
Um, thank you. I heard you say the um, three-month report out. Um, so I'm wondering, is that so the frequency for the detailed expenditures will be every three months, and will we have each firm and and I'm just wondering how it will be reported to us, so just so we can monitor it as a board. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of the things we're going to work with the board uh, to get really a format that actually meets the needs. But I think tentatively what we do is at least identify what contractors we're using, what the task orders have been assigned to. what, And I would put it to some aspect of the services tied to the service categories I've described. Yeah, I, I appreciate us being expeditious. I think that's important that we get this work done and going. Um, but I think it's also important that we, as a board, have the details of, of how money's being spent and what projects are what smaller projects are being done and the second question is um, amongst the um, 13 or 14 firms I think you said that we engaged with um, are there any are any of these new firms or any uh, I know there's only so many firms that can do this type of work in the country but have we engaged with anyone new in this in this process yeah, so uh, in here we will have three new firms we historically do not have contracts with. So we are adding some additional capacity, and they have significant experience in the flood management arena. Great. Thank you. Ms. Gilchrist, did you have something to add? Yes, Director Shaw. We current The contract technician currently reports quarterly on all delegated contracts, so these will just be included in there, and what she reports is amendments or new contracts or task orders given to uh, consultants. So that will continue. And she, I think on that um, report, she has the program manager in the project. So that will, these will be added to those quarterly reports. Anything else? <clears throat> well, I appreciate it. There are a lot of contracts uh, here, but certainly um, in the vein of clearing the path and making sure we take full advantage of the resources that are coming our way from the federal government, we definitely need to, to do this. So um, in any event, I'll entertain a motion. A mo motion from Member Jennings, second from Member Frost. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And that's it. That's it. We'll adjourn. <laughs>